Hello Year 12. Today we're going to be starting the coursework unit of our um, assessments. Uh, we're going to be doing two units at the same time. And as you look through the brief, what you're going to see is that these units link together. The object of the A-level course is that you will blend your units in such a way that they complement each other, in much the same way as if we were working in industry. We don't just go and make something. It's usually part of a larger scale product project. So today, we're going to be starting our Unit 3 and Unit 21 work. I'm going to talk a little bit about what the uh, brief is. It's quite open-ended and you can customise your product in many different ways. I'm going to give some suggestions, but ultimately the choice is yours. So the brief is that you are going to be pitching a new magazine. This magazine, obviously print-based, is going to be pitched to a company called Pulse Magazine. They're a real company and you can check out their website. What Pulse Magazine do right now is they produce a guide to the local area, telling you about events and news in our local vicinity, in, at the moment in Northampton, in Northampton and Milton Keynes. Your pitch is that you're going to be making a spin-off of Pulse magazine, and it is going to be a music-based magazine for Northamptonshire. Now, the music scene is completely up to you. Now, if you wish to make this about chart hits, underground unknown artists, big band brass, Morris dancers, you can do any of those. It's completely up to you to scale this how you want. As long as you choose your target audience and run with it, you're fine. By the end of this project, which will take us several months to complete, you will be producing a front cover and a double page spread of your magazine. It's going to give the client um, an idea of what you, the magazine will look like and then they're going to decide if they want to commission it or not. Okay. In order for, to, for the software for this, we'll be using Adobe Photoshop to create those graphics. That's a long way away for the moment though. We're not creating them anytime soon. To start off with, we need to come up with the concept. We're going to be pitching our ideas, which is what Unit 21 is mainly about. And then we're moving into Unit 3 where we go to, to actually create the product and work out if it's any good. So these are the broad starting tasks that you're going to have. And as you work through the unit, you're going to see some short codes. U21 for Unit 21 work and U3 for Unit 3 work. So you're always going to know what task is which. Our first task, task one, which will take several weeks to complete, is to generate ideas for an original media product, okay, based on the client brief that I have given you. There's a pass and a merit criteria here. The pass, for those of you who are looking towards it, is worth about an E at A level, and the merit is worth about a C grade at A level. There's no distinction criteria for this part of the assignment, but as I'm sure you're aware, in order to get to the distinction, which is worth an A grade at A level, you'll need to make sure that you hit the distinction criteria when they appear on the task sheets. Um, let's scroll up to the first one. Pass one for unit 21. You need to explain different ideas for an original media product based on a brief. It does say ideas. So at this point, we've not chosen one. And that's really important because at the moment we haven't done any research. Part of your one of the tasks later on is that you will be researching which one is the most viable. For the merit task, you're going to discuss strengths and weaknesses of each of your different ideas. As a general rule of thumb, I like you to think of free ideas for a magazine. Now, it's up to you, as I said before, what musical brand, artist, genre, target audience you wish to go for. But our main task this week is for you to choose some. It could be something that you're personally interested in. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's great. Go for it. It might be something that friends or family are interested in. It might be something that you just think would be a great idea. If you're not musically inclined, if it's not something that you're massively interested in, 
what I would definitely try to choose here is something that you feel that you would have some broad knowledge about, because that's going to help you when it comes to writing evaluations and justifying it. As we're currently in a lockdown area as well, doing market research is going to be tricky. It's going to be interesting how you work out to do surveys and stuff like that. We'll get to that when we come to it, but it's worth bearing in mind that potentially the only people that will be able to answer your survey are people that you can send messages to or family and friends. So our task by the end of this section of the project is to create all of this. We're not going to be doing that this week. By the end of this week, I would expect you to have interpreted the client's brief and to write up um, written up uh, an understanding of what's being asked of you, as well as your first initial thoughts. So I'm going to talk about how that works. And I've got a Word document here. I'm also going to start explaining briefly how I want coursework to be done. Um, we are in an A-level style course, and we are getting prepped for university, so we are going to be writing in a very academic style. Um, in your live lessons of the next few weeks, I will be showing some of the techniques that you can use in Word to make your writing uh, look a lot better and a lot more formal, which will obviously help you to achieve those higher marks and to really tick off some grades. So, have you interpreted the client brief? Well, let's scroll back up to the client again and see what's being asked of us. One of the first things that I will do when I see this is I will look at what's written here and I'll put some of the key words on a page and then start to think about well, what does that actually mean? Okay, picture ideas for a new online and print based magazine. So what does a magazine entail? Well, who is the target audience for magazines? Do you read magazines? Do your parents read magazines? Do you know anyone who has a subscription to a magazine service? And if not, well, that's going to tell you something really important, that perhaps you're not the target audience for a magazine. Because millions of people around the country do have subscriptions to various magazine services. And maybe your first start would be to find out who that person is. I'm going to open up the... Um, this document here, which you can find on the um, OCR website. <clears throat> so this is the uh, the specification for the unit, and it tells you what you do need to include in your work. And if I scroll to this section here, in fact, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit clearer for you. In order to interpret the client briefs, you need to understand demographics. So who are the people that read magazines? and who are the people that are interested in certain sorts of music. Is it youth as a general term? Well, that seems quite broad to me. Is it aimed at families? Is it ABC1 adults? A much more specific term which I quite like, so long as you can remember what ABC1 means. Please check your notes, you're in at one if you can't. You're going to need to understand conventions of magazines and definitely of music. Okay, there are certain conventions that are always going to be seen in a certain product. If I wanted to, for instance, find a magazine advertising travel, then as a usual thing, they, they run with the most exotic and prettiest looking picture. If I had something that was advertising summer holidays, I'm likely to see images of Spanish beaches or Walt Disney World in America. I'm unlikely to be confronted by an image of Skegness, even though that may be a holiday that's being advertised in the magazine. There are certain industry requirements, okay? Now this here talks a little bit about scheduling of TV and stuff like that, but there are certain requirements that you would end up having in a magazine as well. Certain things that you would expect to see on front covers, uh, the sorts of things that will be front and center of a particular product. I'm gonna show you some examples. And of course, in terms of the medium, when we're looking at print, there are certain things that we definitely still want to start thinking about that make uh, our text, our ideas pop onto the page. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples to get started. Um, let's go for this. I'm going to pick something completely different. Crafts. So craft magazines uh, come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and here's one. Um, what do you think? I see something like this, 
and I have a very clear understanding in my head about who I think this product is aimed at. Um, it's not me, definitely not me. That's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just the way it's presented, the way they've used their fonts, the sorts of images that they've included, and the text. It's interesting to simply read those headlines and think about who would buy this because they've read that. Okay. Who is this aiming at when it's talking about, for instance, that you can craft your own vintage wedding? Is that aimed at pre-teenagers? Is that aimed at the elderly? Perhaps not. Is it aimed at various different groups of people? That's for you to make a decision. But crafting isn't just this. Crafting, in some other ways, may be more DIY, where it's pretty much the same exercise, except different tools. And the way that this particular magazine is laid out is fascinating. It is very different, but also many similarities. Take a look at the headlines that you're starting to see here. It's incredible to me that when I see this and how ordered everything is on the page. Compared to this one here, which is somewhat haphazard, there's lots of things scattered around, it's very busy. This one it seems to be very, very structured, very, very organized. You can even see a look from the shelves at the back there. Now, of course, this is a posed shot for a magazine. This may not be real, but see how organized and well laid out that is compared to this collapsed section of bits of paper that are in the middle of the screen. It seems to me to be appealing to a very different sort of person. I may give these person a name and explain the sort of thing that they love in their lifestyle. Taking a look at the, uh, the ground here that I'm seeing for this DIY hardware shot, it seems incredibly tidy. Now that might be because it is a studio. I don't know, but it might just be because it's really appealing to certain sorts of people, okay? Now, of course, crafts aren't just for this group or for this group, but you'll also find crafts for a very, very different age group. Now, although this doesn't feature many tools or vintage wedding material, it is a very similar sort of product. We've got some things that are going to be created in this. It's advertising it for a very, very specific group, although potentially a group that doesn't go out to actually buy this. It's probably bought for them, okay? But again, look at the way things are organized. There is some level of structure in here, but it's definitely a lot more random than it was uh, in, in this uh, particular magazine. But the more I look about this as well, how very clear everything is. Nothing's really overlapping. It's almost like the people that would be advertised to for this product would get too confused if it was too layered or too cluttered. It's the text and the images are very, very separate. You can point to each individual one and see what they all are. And that might be something that would appeal to the demographic for this magazine. Now, in terms of magazines, hopefully you'll start to see some patterns and breaking down your client brief you might start to think about what sort of things you want to see in your product we are after all talking about music so we should probably look at music that exists already especially for news so i did a quick google search i've never used this website before but this is all about music and news and gives me all sorts of information i can start to see the layout of this who is this website aimed at? Who does it appeal to? Who logs onto this website every day? I don't know, because it's not me. But that doesn't mean that we can't take a look at this and think about the way this is laid out, the sorts of interesting things that we're seeing here. What sort of music this particular website is covering? Is it different to this page? 
well, there are some definite similarities on this page to, to the other one, um, but is there a slightly different style? Perhaps, maybe there is. Maybe it's to do with the, the brands and the sorts of music. I've gone for NME here, which I do know a little bit about, and I know that this sort of music they're into is going to be a very, very particular demographic style. How about if we went for something a little bit more niche? Now, for these ones, I had to definitely Google them. Uh, if you wanted to find the UK's biggest brass band music website, let me introduce you to fourbarsrest.com, which I didn't even know existed 10 minutes ago. Now, this has a very similar, when I look at it, style for a website, but of course covers a very, very different musical genre. There are certain things we can still see here that are very similar, some things that are very different, they're using their images, what they've got for headlines and their text. It's very important that we start to pick out on the same things and the different things, because it will help us for our brief. How about Morris dancing? I know it's your favourite, it's obviously a big deal. Um, so Morris dancing, again, is incredibly niche. Um, it would be a very, very small set of people that would be interested in the music and the events of, of that sort of thing. And looking at their website, we can see that this is definitely much more of an amateur production than the ones we've seen previously. But there are some things that are very, very similar. If I go to our textbook very briefly, what I'm asking you to look at for this week is LO1 of Unit 21, and specifically 1.1 and 1.2. Now these two sections for this week are what I want you to focus on. I would like you to interpret the brief that I've given you. And there is a lot of space for you to interpret. Think about the purpose of the product that you are being asked to design. What form will that product entail? What target audience might be interested in that? What is the key message that that product is going to be trying to sell? What medium is used? What budgets do you think a magazine aimed at Northamptonshire music venues, what budget do you imagine they would have? You don't need to give me money, you could just give us sort of a guideline of what that would look like. What deadlines do you think have been issued to you? Well, I'll tell you straight out, there's nothing specific in there, but do you think you can take 10 years to complete this project? Mm. No. What is a successful project? What is the success criteria? How will I know if my clients are happy? You will need to interpret that brief to work out what is it that they want to see. For them, what would be a successful project? So, all of this really wraps around your audience. What conventions are they used to seeing? What is their taste, their lifestyle, behavior, or interest? And I can't stress enough, if I haven't already done so in these previous videos, this is so much easier for you if you can give the person a name, you can give them a backstory, you can tell them the sorts of things that they would want to see, and then design it for them. What would that person want? In terms of industry requirements, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that later on, about the legal and ethical issues and that sort of thing. I'm going to skip a little bit on that, but please take a read of that and, and look through the links that it gives here. 1.2 is how to use your understanding in media products to generate your new ideas. So using your interpretation of your client brief, we're going to use your prior experience of similar products, your prior learning, what you have already sort of seen out there in the world, to hopefully build up your idea of what's gonna make a great idea. Now to generate your own ideas, which is what this paragraph here is pretty much all about, I'll zoom in a little bit to see, what you need to make sure here is that you're, you're picking an idea and you're understanding what's gonna be featured in it. I know that for instance, if I'm aiming a magazine at children, then it's probably gonna look more like this than that. And if I'm aiming at a very specific niche audience, it's going to have the sorts of information that I would see on this website compared to perhaps something more general. What I need you to do with this sort of work now 
is to make sure that you have ticked off the criteria for 1.1 and 1.2 that you've really clearly explained to me what your magazine ideas are going to be about, what sorts of things am I going to be reading in them, and then hopefully by next uh, time that we uh, uh, chat, we'll be looking for 1.3, 1.4 and further on, which is where we're gonna start using some uh, of the techniques, skills and documents to really focus and narrow down our idea and really expand upon all the key aspects of it. So, make sure this is done. Try and submit your first draft ideas onto Teams uh, by the end of this week. And I will be hopefully seeing you in one of our live Q&A sessions where I can give a little bit more guidance on the sort of work that, I'm, that I'd like to see. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know if you need anything. See you soon.